Okay, so uh, in this video, I'm just going to quickly show you uh, how we can use the Euler-Lagrange equation to get the equations of motion for this system from this Lagrangian. So if you're not interested in the derivation, um, just skip to the next video, which is just a very short video uh, showing you the equations of motion that we get uh, and how we can actually simplify this, what looks like a complicated system, into something a bit simpler. Okay, so we have our Euler-Lagrange equation here. Now, if we just expand this out uh, and simplify, right, L is equal to a half big M plus little m big X squared, that's from these two terms, uh, plus if we expand out this bracket, we halves cancel out, we get M L X dot theta dot cos theta plus uh, a half M L squared theta dot squared. I realize I forgot to add the potential energy onto the end of this, so that's minus m g l cos theta. So we just have that on the end, minus m g l cos theta. So we are now going to make the small angle approximation. So this cos theta here, uh, so in the small angle approximation, uh, we generally just keep quadratic terms, so we can say that cos theta is equal to 1 minus theta squared over 2. So the reason why we don't have any terms past this is because once you start getting even like um, once you start having even higher powers of theta than just theta squared, it gets so tiny um, that we just don't need to worry about it. It doesn't have a significant enough uh, effect on our equation, so we just throw them out. So we're actually also going to, for this middle term here, throw out the theta squared. It's because of the presence of this derivative here. So now let's rewrite this equation with the small angle approximation, which will give us our Lagrangian is a half big M plus little m x dot squared plus m l x dot theta dot plus a half m l squared theta dot squared minus m g l one minus theta squared over two. Okay, so now let's do our Euler-Lagrange equation. So our Euler-Lagrange equation is uh, ordinarily given in terms of Q, right? But you can see here we have these multiple uh, coordinates here. We have x and we have theta. So it is simply as simple as just having two equations, one for x and one for theta. So to solve the Euler-Lagrange equation, I need to know uh, dl dx, dl d theta, and dl d theta dot, then like the derivative of all that with respect to time, and the same thing with x. So let's start off with our x's. So and let's go dl dx. So you see here there's actually no x in this at all. Convenient. So we just have to write 0. So now if we write dl dx dot, not quite as simple, unfortunately. We go, okay, well, here's one. So this becomes m plus m x dot. And then here's another one, so plus m l theta dot. And then there's no more. So this is our equation for dl dx dot. Now we have to find the derivative of this with respect to time. So d dt, better pop a d, of dl dx dot is just, this remains constant and this remains constant, so this is just m plus m x double dot, because we're taking the derivative of this twice now, plus m l theta double dot. Um, Okay, so now let's have a look at the theta components. So dl d theta. Um, no theta here, no theta here, no theta here, but unfortunately it does uh, crop up once, so we do have to put it in. So if we differentiate this, we'll see that we get m g l theta. And now if we find dl d theta dot, uh, no theta dot here, here we go, so this becomes m l x dot plus m l squared theta dot. And now again, find the time derivative of that. 
we end up with ml x double dot plus m l squared theta double dot. So these are our the two parts we'll be using for our two Euler Lagrange equations, dl dx, and then d dt of dl dx dot, and same thing of theta. So I'm just going to clear up this bit uh, and put this up the top, and then we'll solve the uh, Euler Lagrange equation. Okay, so now let's solve the Euler Lagrange equation. So just to quickly refresh your memory, the Euler Lagrange equation is given by d dt of dl dq dot is equal to dl dq, where these q's are just our generalized coordinates. So let's uh, just put that in the corner there so that it will stay there reminding us what we're doing. Stop here. Okay, so now let's go uh, and solve the x component first. So we have big M plus little m x double dot plus m l theta double dot is equal to zero. So now let's make this so that it's an x double dot equals negative m l theta dot for big M plus little m. This is one equation. So you might be able to see now where I'm going with this. So now let's do the same thing for our theta components. So we end up with m l x double dot plus m l squared theta is double dot I should say is equal to m g l theta. So my second equation. Now we can see I can substitute in this equation here into for x double dot in here and then I'll end up with an equation that is only in terms of uh, x double dot and sorry theta double dot uh, and theta. So let's do that. So we'll put one into two. So we get m l uh, times by negative m l of a big M plus little m theta double dot plus m l squared theta double dot equals m g l theta. So now let's expand out this and we get negative m squared l squared over big M plus little m theta double dot plus m l squared theta double dot equals m g l theta. Okay, so now let's uh, simplify this. When we simplify it, uh, we end up with big M little m l squared over big M plus little m theta double dot equals little m g l theta. So now these little m's cancel out. Uh, and if I rearrange it, then I end up with theta double dot is equal to g. These l's also cancel uh, outside of big M plus little m divided by big M uh, l times by theta. So this is the equation of motion under the small angle approximation for this pendulum. So I'm going to quickly sh um, change, show you in the next video uh, what this actually means uh, and then that'll be it for Lagrangians. So uh, just a quick note, my apologies here. Uh, I managed to mess up uh, and forget a negative uh, up here. So when I differentiate it, there should be a negative up here. So that will result uh, in this final equation actually having a negative here.